Romans chapter number 16, and we'll begin reading in verse number 17. The Bible says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. That ought to be all uh, our church's testimony. By the way, that is our church's testimony. Uh, most of the time, and I'm not preaching yet, but most of the time we come to church, we enjoy the services, we're here, we enjoy our church family. But you don't realize the ministry, the sun never sets on our ministry. And our church is known throughout the world. I, I still go to conferences and people come up and they tell me they've heard about our church. Folks that I've never met, never seen. I mean, folks know about our church and that, that ought to be... Uh, a good thing you know I know about some churches it's not a good thing they've had some problems uh, but it's a blessing that our church is known abroad and uh, that, ought to, that ought to be known uh, again verse 19 for your obedience has come abroad unto all men I am glad therefore on your behalf but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing, the good time of fellowship. Thank you for those that have been here for a long time today, practicing, getting ready for the Christmas program. Thank you for those that give up their Sunday evening service to work with our young people. And God, thank you for folks that just love you and are devoted to you and Lord, it is noised abroad, uh, the ministry of our church and the families that are touched. And Lord, we're just thankful that, God, we can do anything that brings glory and honor to your name. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us the next few minutes. Uh, I pray you'd enlighten our eyes to truth. I pray you'd stir our hearts for righteousness. And I pray that you would do something in our lives that, God, others can see it, and they too would desire to have you as Lord and Savior in your life. Uh, Father, I pray if there's anybody throughout the building that doesn't know Christ, uh, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. Be with Miss Janet, be with the littles, others that are sick. God, touch them and help them. Be with those that, Lord, that would desire to be here but couldn't be here tonight. Be with them. And Father, certainly we ask again that you'd be glorified and God, honor would be brought to your name. Help us, Lord, uh, never to bring shame upon you, but to bring honor to your glorious name. Bless now. And we'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful and holy name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice as Paul's concluding this letter to uh, uh, the church there at Rome, notice a few things. Uh, uh, notice, first of all, he deals with division. In verse number 17, he says, Now I beseech you, uh, brethren, he's wanting to, to strongly bring their attention to what he's about to say. Uh, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses uh, contrary to the doctrine uh, which you have learned, and avoid them. Uh, uh, Paul says, if you've got somebody causing divisions, uh, if you've got somebody standing in opposition, if you've got somebody uh, that's sowing discord among the brethren, uh, he said, mark them and avoid them. It's very important uh, uh, a lot of churches don't do that anymore, Brother Bob. We come up in error. If somebody caused problems in the church, uh, 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 they would rebuke them before all that others also may fear uh, uh, and understand how important it is uh, uh, to live right, do right, uh, and be right in the church. Uh, 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 the church is to be without spot, without wrinkle. Uh, and Paul is uh, 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 sternly, uh, 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 in, uh, uh, soberly dealing with these folks uh, to mark them that cause divisions. Uh, can I say, uh, the Lord always unites. It's the devil that divides. So he deals with division. Notice he also deals with doctrine in verse number 17. Now I beseech you, uh, 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 brethren, uh, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine mm, which you've learned. Can I say, the devil always fights the Bible. He always fights the preaching and teaching of the Bible. 
He doesn't want you to learn truth. The devil's a deceiver. He's wanting to sow discord and sow doubt. Uh, and he wants to deceive uh, uh, folks. Uh, and so uh, 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 he always attacks doctrine. Doctrine is the study of the Bible. Uh, can I say tonight, uh, there's a reason we have 300 different denominations and religions being taught in America. Uh, the devil's been crafty. He's been hard at work. Uh, and he wants to deceive people and divide people. Uh, 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 he doesn't want people to know the truth. Uh, well, uh, can I say Jesus Christ came uh, full of truth uh, and grace. Uh, and what a blessing to have the truth tonight. Uh, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, and we ought to aspire to truth uh, and long for truth. Uh, and what a blessing to have the truth tonight. Uh, uh, can I say sound doctrine is to be preached. Uh, sound doctrine uh, 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 is to be practiced. Uh, and sound doctrine is to be protected. Uh, that's why we fight so diligently to get the truth out uh, and to protect the truth. When somebody stands in opposition to truth, we deal with them. Because the truth is that important. So he deals with division, and he deals with doctrine. Notice uh, he also deals with deception. Look again at verse number 18. He says, For they who, those that cause divisions, those who fight against doctrine. And by the way, it's real simple. Brother Clint, if you didn't believe what we practiced around here, why would you stay? You know why they stay? Because the devil's planted them there. Hmm? Listen, if, if I wasn't for what was going on, I'd go on down and find somewhere where I was for. Hmm? You know? But uh, the reason some stay is they've been planted there by the devil. I preached one time on a, a, a message on being in God's garden but not belonging there. Hmm? You know, in a garden, you'll find all kinds of things. You'll find vegetables or flowers, things that were planted there to bring beauty and bring a, a substance, but you'll also find weeds there. You'll find rocks there. You'll find critters there. Hmm? Things that don't belong there. That's why you have a gardener, to get things out that don't belong there. And can I say... Uh, there are some that stay where they've not been planted by God because they've been planted by the devil. Hmm? Anyway, notice the deception. Verse number 18, look what it says. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. You've got to watch people who are all about themselves and not about the Lord. Hmm? It's very important. Uh, it says, uh, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. They always sound like they know what they're talking about. But make no mistake, they're there to deceive. They don't serve the Lord but their own belly. I know of a church, I know you're not going to believe this, true story, I know of it. I don't know of a church that had a deacon. And when confronted about what the Scripture said, this is what he said, Brother Josh. He said, I don't care what the Bible says. I believe this. If somebody don't care what the Bible says, they need to go on down the road. You know what I'm saying? Huh? And I really don't care about your opinion or what you believe. If the Bible says it, that settles it. Hmm? But Miss Jackie, he didn't care what the Bible said. Because he didn't belong to God, that's why. Can I say the Bible's the absolute and final authority of our lives? But they're there to deceive. Notice who they deceive. They usually don't deceive the pastor. They deceive the hearts of the simple. Can I say the devil always preys on weak-minded people? And mark her down, every church has got them. There are just some folks, they just want to belong. And I understand. There are some folks that want to be in a, in, a, in a place where they feel important. I understand that. And by the way, what a blessing to be accepted among the beloved. Here there are no big eyes or little U's. We're all the same in Christ. What a blessing. Uh, but those that are simple-minded, don't get into scriptures. 
And if somebody comes along and sounds like they know what they're talking about, they'll follow them. Why do you think John said, try the spirits whether they be of God? How do we try them? With the Word of God. The Word of God, again, is our authority. But there are some who are always out to deceive. Mm -mm. What a tangled web we weave when we set out to deceive. It's a dangerous, dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Why do you think those that are planted by the Lord and I'm not, are planted by the devil and always bucking up against the Lord, why do you think they don't ever come and deal with the pastor head on? They don't want to be exposed. Mm -hmm. They're deceivers. They want to hide in the shadows. But you know what? Truth has a way of revealing who they are. Mm -hmm. We see deception. We see doctrine. We see division. But notice the diligence that Paul deals with. Look in verse number 19. I'm going somewhere. Hang in there. Verse 19 says, For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. He said, I'm glad therefore on your behalf. He's commending them. He's saying, people know about your obedience. They know about your service for God. He said, I'm glad on your behalf. Paul's not jealous. He's for them, not against them. He's excited. But can I just stop right there? If God is blessing you and God is doing things in your life, listen, this preacher's for you. I'm excited for you. I'm happy for you. If you're blessed, I'm blessed because you're blessed. If somebody gets envious because God's blessing you, they've got a heart problem. Hmm? I don't care where you live. I, I pray every one of you gets, gets to live on, what's that name of that road in Triple Crown? Omaha Trace. I hope all of you get a house over there and you invite me over so I can say, I know people that live there. Huh? I think the houses start there at about a million and go up. All right? It would not upset me at all. Now, if you're stupid enough to pay a million dollars for a house, go ahead. I don't care. Huh? But listen, if God blesses you, I'm all for it. I don't get jealous about that. Huh? But if folks get me as they're telling about their heart, Miss Mary, you're homeless. I feel bad for you. You sold your house. Huh? I'm going to pray God blesses you. You got a bed to sleep in. She's blessed, huh? Nah, she moved in with her son, huh? Got to, you know, she kept tripping and falling and hurting her foot and couldn't take care of her house anymore. I don't know what to do. But listen. If God blesses you, I, I, that excites me. Huh? I, I do. I get excited. Huh? Brother Tony and Miss Brandy, for as long as I've known them, have wanted to move away from their home. And now God's a blessing. That excites me. That's an answer to prayer. God heard and answered prayer. And you know the Bible says that if we put God first and we seek God, He'll give us the desires of our heart. Isn't that a blessing? God has answered their prayer. He's given. That excites me that God cares so much about them that He heard their prayer and now He's answered their prayer. That's a blessing. That blesses me. Uh, but, uh, but folks that get jealous, I just don't understand it. I just don't. That, as a matter of fact, the Bible has a whole lot to do with envy. And it's never good. Uh, a whole lot to do deal with and covetous. I mean, there's only one Michael Jackson now that the other one died. Isn't that a blessing? Uh, I wouldn't want to be Michael Jackson. Then I'd have to put up with somebody like me always reminding me what my name is. huh? Mm. Listen, he's dealing with this. Now look what he has to say. He said, I'm glad, therefore, on your behalf. Now there's a little conjunction. He's going to give them a little wisdom right here. He says, But yet I would have you to be wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. He's saying, I pray that God blesses you so much that you have so much understanding to all the goodness of God and you have very little understanding to what's evil in this world. He's saying, I'm praying God protects you to where you don't understand or you never come to where you realize what's on the other side of the tracks. He said, I'm just praying blessing, blessing, blessing and you're wise to the, the good things of God and you never ever have to come to where you understand the evil things. Where you never really uh, approached with those that divide and those that deceive and those that where all you can do is come in and sing praise unto God and God shows up and all you know is the goodness of God. All you taste of is the goodness. That's what he's a longing for in their lives. 
we see the diligence of their testimony and the prayers of the Apostle Paul in verse number 19. Now notice the dominance, verse number 20. He said, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. He starts off talking about the God of peace. And he ends this verse talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and His grace. And can I say, if you got God before you and Jesus behind you, you're going to win. Huh? Matter of fact, you're going to be pretty dominant. And he, right in the middle of that, says that God's going to bruise Satan's head by you shortly. Hmm? What a blessing. I don't know about you, but I get tired of dealing with old slew foot. I get tired of feeling like the booger gets the upper hand on me every now and then. And just the thought that God can do anything in my life that bruises that sorry, no good head, what a blessing. Huh? To think that one of these days, we're going to see Him get His due. And to think that even now, God, can cause us to be a wound in that sucker's side. What a blessing. I don't know about you, but I say hallelujah. That God would allow us to be a thorn in His flesh. Huh? I firmly believe, Brother Brian, one of these days, uh, before He casts Him off the lake of fire, He's going to let us all take a kick at Him. Huh? Wouldn't that be a blessing when He binds Him and says, All right, have at Him. Huh? Huh? Wouldn't that be a blessing? Huh? But I got good news. You can even bruise his head right now. And I want to preach with God's help on bruising Satan's head. Bruising Satan's head. Seems like too many times he's, uh, he's affecting other people. Wouldn't it be a blessing to affect him? Wouldn't it be a blessing to be a, uh, cause him to get a black eye? Wouldn't it be a blessing to cause him uh, uh, to get beat up and left in a bloody mess? Wouldn't it be a blessing to see him brought down? Uh, 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 wouldn't it be a blessing uh, 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 to be used of God uh, to cause Satan any kind of turmoil or trauma? I think it would be a blessing, huh? Well, how can we bruise Satan's head? Well, first of all, you can bruise his head by being faithful. Everything that he has in his quiver, every fiery dart that he shoots at you, every snare that he lays before you, Everything that he tries to do to, uh, uh, to bring peril in your life is designed for one thing, and that is to keep you from being faithful. Every time you overcome and continue to be faithful, you bruise his head. Huh? You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, first of all, being faithful in your personal walk. Every day, you ought to walk as unto Christ. Every day, you ought to spend time in prayer. Every day, you ought to spend time in the Word. Every day, you ought to meditate on, on the Lord. Every day, you ought to have a song in your heart that praises God. Every day, you ought to do something that propels you to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Hmm? If not, there's going to be a snare out there. There's going to be a stumbling block out there. There's going to be something that's going to cause you to hurt the name of Jesus. But every day that you're faithful, you bruise Satan's head. You can do it through your personal walk. You can do it by becoming a prayer warrior. Hmm? You remember, remember that movie about being a prayer warrior? Man, what, what, what? Give, give us about 100 of them ladies in, in the church. Huh? We turn Florence upside down with five of them ladies. You may not be able to sing, and you may not be able to stand and teach, and you may not be able to do a lot of things, but you can pray. And the more you pray, and the more you get plugged into prayer, and the more you fight off the flesh and give yourself to prayer, the more heaven moves toward earth. And it bruises Satan's head. And you're faithful in becoming a prayer warrior. You can change people's lives. Can I say this? By being faithful in practicing works. I was talking to Lexi for church. I said, how's basketball going? She said, oh. It's the difference between middle school and high school. I told her every level it's going to get that way. When you go from JV to varsity, it's going to get that way. The girls get bigger and they get faster. She says, I can't believe I face girls over six foot tall. Yeah. And they're going to get bigger 
and they're going to get faster. And I said, and you're going to think about, boy, I need to pass the ball over here. And by the time you get done thinking about it, they're going to already defend it. Uh, 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 you've got to anticipate. You've got to work faster. You've got to work. And all that takes practice. Hmm? You see, in middle school, you can just show up. That's not the case with high school. You've got to work at it. Hmm? And you've got to work at it. Can I say, you just don't get saved and all of a sudden you're, you're a, a great Christian. It takes practice. So you still have this old fleshly nature. And this old fleshly nature needs to die out daily. It needs to be crucified daily. And you've got to work. It takes work to pray. And I'll tell you something. The flesh don't like prayer. It takes work. It takes work to meditate on the Scriptures. It takes work to read your Bible and concentrate when you're reading it. Can I say the devil lets you read it, but he'll have your mind drifting. You won't even know what you read. So what have you really accomplished? You know, I've had folks uh, tell me, I read ten chapters today. Preacher, yeah, what would you retain? I'd rather you read one verse and get it down than to read uh, a whole book and not know what you read. You see, it takes work to concentrate and look and study what you're reading. Uh, it takes work uh, 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 keeping your mind on the things of God, and that takes time. It takes work. It takes practice. Uh, it's practice bridling your tongue. Go read chapter James. Your tongue's set on fire from hell. And if you're honest tonight, there's been times you opened your mouth and words came out before you was trying to catch them and put them back, but it's too late. Mm. You know why you got two ears and one mouth? You're supposed to listen twice as much as you talk. Huh? I read, uh, uh, a preacher said something, I read it this week, he said, you know, I've had to apologize for things I've said a lot of times. He said, but I don't remember apologizing too much for listening. Mm. Mm. It takes work mm, putting a bridle on your tongue. It takes work walking right, talking right, living right. That takes work. But when you practice it, and you practice it, and you practice it, you, you form what they call spiritual muscle memory. If you get up every day and you make yourself pray, guess what? For long, you get up, you know you're going to pray. You get up every day and you read the Word of God. Before long, you, your body knows you're going to read the Word of God. It takes work. But when you are faithful, you bruise the head of Satan. How come it's no problem being faithful to things we like? But we supposedly love the Lord, and sometimes it's hard to be faithful. I tell you why, because you don't have an enemy combating the things you like. But when it comes to loving the Lord, you've got an enemy. And he's striving to bruise you instead of you bruise him. But being faithful, you bruise his head. I thought about this, not only by being faithful, by being fruitful. You know, the devil, the moment you got saved, he knew he lost you. See, he owned you. He had you bound by sin. But the moment you got saved, Jesus pardoned your sin and he forgave you of all your trespasses. And Satan no longer owned you. You belonged to the Lord. And he came to grips with the fact he didn't own you no more. But now it's his mission to keep you from leading anybody else to Christ. He doesn't want any fruit in your life. He knows he lost you. He just don't want you to impact anybody else. That's why he fights so hard about you having any fruit. Now, if you can look at me, you know I'm not much of a farmer. I'm not much of a produce man. I'm not much of an apple tree man or an orange man. But I do know one thing. Long before you ever get fruit, you've got to put seed in the ground. And I, knew, I do know this. Seed's got to be in good ground. You can't bury seed in clay and expect to get, get some good fruit from it. You've got to have good fertile ground. And I do know if the seed's in good fertile ground, it's got to be watered. And then I know it takes some patience. See, when we first get saved, we want everybody to get saved. You have a hard time understanding why they don't see it. You didn't, get, you didn't see it the first time you heard about it either. The Lord did a work in your life. Huh? 
And God put people in your life. And God kept working on you. And He kept working on that seed that was planted in your heart. And can I say to be fruitful, you just got to keep planting seed. Sometimes you're planting. Sometimes you're watering. Sometimes you're tilling ground. You just got to be fruitful. And can I say John 15, it's appointed unto God or it's ordained of God that we bring forth much fruit. If you're going to bring forth much fruit, you're going to have to plant much seed. Hmm? It's kind of like that parable of the talents. God gave one man ten, one man five, one man one. One took ten, went and got made ten others. One had five, went and made five others. One he gave one said, I went and buried it because I knew you were an austere man. You want to come back, you want... See, God has invested in you. And he wants you to take what he's given you and invest it. Put it out there. But if you don't, you won't be fruitful. And Satan's laughing all the way to the bank. He doesn't want you to be fruitful. He doesn't want you to impact anybody else's life. He doesn't want you to have joy in the midst of your sorrow. He don't want you to have peace in the midst of your stone. That spiritual fruit that comes again in that practice in the things of God and believing the Bible. But he also doesn't want to, God to impact your life to where you impact others. You bruise his head by being fruitful. There are nine fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, and God tries to incorporate those in all of our lives. And the more fruitful you are, the more you bruise his head. I thought about this. You bruise Satan's head by being on fire. You know what he's tried to do the last week? Put out revival fires that you got help from the meeting here a couple of weeks ago. Huh? He knew you was coming to church every night, so he let you come. He let you get fired up. Now he's tried to throw a wet blanket on you. And he knows how. He knows how to get your mind on everything but Jesus. When you stay on fire for God, you know what you do? You just bruise his head. Look around. How many Christians do you know that's really on fire? How many churches do you know that's really on fire? Why do you think that is? Satan's hard at work. Hmm? He's bruising a whole lot more than he's getting. You know, when I was young, we used to have a phrase, cruising for a bruising. Hmm? Not too many people bruising him. Hmm? Say, how do you stay on fire? You just keep throwing another log on the fire. Hmm? You know what's good about coming to church on Sunday and Wednesday? You just get to throw another log on. Hmm? Keep stoking it. Hmm? And then each and every day, keep stoking it. Hmm? Get you a good song that helps you. Hmm? Get you a good verse that helps you. Hmm? Just keep throwing another log on the fire. Being on fire bruises his head. I thought about this. You know what bruises his head? Exercising faith. You know, the Bible says that God's given to every man a measure of faith. And saved people, you had saving faith. That's how you got saved. But God's given you a measure of faith. But what are you doing with it? Hmm? Now listen. Every one of us have all the information we need to be in shape. But only... Clint and Rhonda are. Now, if I'm telling it right, Miss Rhonda, before she goes to work every day, goes to the gym. Am I telling it right? And if I heard it right, you like to work out about as much as I like to work out. You really don't like it. But you do it. And you do it early. Get it over with. Because if you don't do it early, you're going to be like me. You're not going to do it at all. She's disciplined to do it. She don't like to do it, but she does like the way it makes her feel. Hmm? Now, those of you that what hair about five years ago, she's lost over 100 pounds. That's part of the picture, isn't it? But she, you know, I recently saw a picture, but I, did, I forgot what it used to be. Because look at you now. All the effects. Working out, putting yourself through what you don't really like to do, but you've done it. Hmm? And I really can't stand her. <laughs> you know? Because I need to do the same thing. And I finally got the okay from my doctor. I can start working out again, but I just hadn't got there yet. 
We finally got rid of all the Thanksgiving leftovers, so I'm without excuse. You know what I'm saying? Huh? And Brother Clint's just a freak. That's all I'm going to say. He's just a freak. Huh? But the truth of the matter is, they put into practice exercising. And we all have the same opportunities. We just choose not to. The same comes true with the Bible. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Do you understand that you have heard more preaching in your life than any other generation before you? Matter of fact, the Bible said in the last days there would be a famine for the hearing of the Word of God. Not a famine for it being available. There's more preaching, more in-depth preaching, more commentary on preaching, more resources on preaching available right now than any other generation before us. Yet we're the weakest spiritually that we've ever been as a people. It's not God's fault because we don't exercise the faith that we hear from the Word of God. Matter of fact, we've got to the point where we have heard so much preaching that preaching that years ago would have brought great revival bores us. We come in and we want to be astounded from the Word of God every time we come in. If the message don't dumbfound us, we don't think we've been in good service. And the problem is, is we have gotten so spiritually fat, we don't exercise what we've heard, so God, why should He give us any more? The truth of the matter is, if I fill this cup up with water and I don't do anything with it, pour more water in, it's going to help, it's just going to make a mess. You know why so many Christians' lives are in a mess? They haven't done anything with the water. The water is always a picture of the Word of God. You see, if we're going to truly be what we should be and bruise Satan's head, we need to go take the water we get today and go pour it out in this world uh, and let folks know what we've been privy to know, uh, exercise the faith that we've heard, uh, empty ourselves of it, uh, come back Wednesday night, uh, have our cup turned up right, let God fill us again, uh, go out and empty it, exercise the faith, put it into practice, uh, and every time we exercise the faith, uh, we get uh, more on fire for God, closer to God, uh, and we're impacting our world that we live in, plus we're bruising Satan's head. But as long as we got a full cup of water, he don't care. He's standing in the corner going, nanny, nanny, boo, boo. Because we're not exercising the faith. We just exist. We ought to thrive. And you thrive when you exercise the faith, when you stretch it farther than you've ever stretched it before. We know the just shall live by faith, but yet we try to live by sight. We want to figure everything out before we step out on faith. It doesn't work that way. When we exercise faith, we bruise Satan's head. I thought about this. You bruise his head by being a friend. Hmm. I got news for you. Everybody needs a friend. The Bible says you want to have friends, you must show yourself friendly. You say, nobody likes me. That's a testimony on you. You want to have friends? Be a friend. Hmm. Everybody can be friendly. You just choose not to be if you don't have any friends. Hmm? You ought to have a world of friends by being friendly. Hmm? Be a friend. And when you befriend people, Satan hates it. Because God's going to use you to be a blessing to them, and hopefully they're a blessing to you. And he hates that. He hates when you have friends in the faith when you encourage somebody that's down, when you pray for somebody that's low, when you bear somebody else's burden. He hates all that stuff. But Jesus honors it. Being a friend, you bruise his head. This is an obvious one. How do you bruise his head? By forsaking sinful practices. Huh? Don't live like you used to live before you got saved. Huh? Fight against the old nature by letting the new nature take over. You'll bruise his head. Hmm? Thought about this lastly. How do you bruise his head? 
by finishing your course. When you got saved, Jesus put you on the highway called straight. And all he said was follow him. Just finish your course. Miss Crystal, I can't run your race for you. You can't run my race for me. Just run your race. Doesn't matter what race he's got or what race he's got or what race you, you run your race. Set your eyes on the finish line. Don't quit till you get there. Finish your course. Now, can I say, it's not always smooth travels. Sometimes there's rocky roads. Sometimes there are curvy roads. Sometimes there's uphill roads. Hmm? But I promise you this, he'll never put you on a road you can't handle. Just follow him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish your faith. Just keep him in sight and just finish your course. You may not be able to do a lot of things, but you can't finish your course. And when you do, you bruise Satan's head. Because all he is trying to do is knock you off course. Now let me help you something. It's easy to get off course. All you got to do is take your eyes off Jesus. You'll get off course. You'll veer right or left. Just finish your course. Just be what Jesus would have you to be. And in so doing, you'll bruise that sorry, no good devil's head. One of the best things that ever be said about you is that your life was a life that showed others what Jesus Christ could do in a life. One of the next best things that can be said about you is your life caused havoc on the devil. Because hmm? I promise you, if your life is causing havoc on the devil, God is using you to impact other people's lives. What a blessing. You know the greatest fulfillment you'll have in your life is that God uses you to be a blessing to somebody else I mean who are we but when God reaches in his shepherd bag and pulls you out and uses you to impact somebody else's life nothing greater can be said of you that just you just little old you God used to help somebody else what better could be said of you Well, I was this, or I was that. Oh, I was just a nobody. That the one who's better than everybody chose to just put his hand on me. And for whatever reason, somebody else got some help. What better could be said of you? And all the while, Satan mad. Y'all remember your sin, many Sam? You know, when cartoons were real cartoons? Huh? What's up with the My Little Pony crowd? Huh? But wasn't it always wonderful when Yosemite Sam would blow his top because he couldn't get Bugs Bunny to do what he wanted Bugs Bunny to do? Huh? That's what Satan does every time you overcome. He blows the lid off his head and he hates it. Huh? Rock em, rock em, rock em, rock em, rock em, rock em, whatever you say under his breath, huh? Yeah. I always was a big Bugs Bunny component. He was my man. He used to have Bugs Bunny ties and Bugs Bunny socks and all that. Everybody said, what was the big deal about Bugs Bunny? He never lost. Elmer Fudd couldn't get him. Daffy Duck couldn't get him. Yosemite Sam couldn't get him. Nobody could get him. Except Daisy Bunny, she got him, but that's a whole different story. All right. What I'm trying to say is, you can overcome. You don't have to lose. Because in Christ, we're a winner. So why don't you just exercise your faith and just live for Jesus, and all the while let him bruise Satan's head using your life. Nothing greater than knowing that sucker's upset and mad, and there's nothing he can do about it. And by the way, when you're sitting in the lap of Jesus, he don't want to have anything to do with you. So that ought to be our aspiration. To bruise Satan's head by being a blessing to the Master. Is your life a blessing? If it is, you're bruising Satan's head. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come and tell the Lord you love him. Maybe he dealt with you about something. You need to come do business.
maybe he spoke to you hard about somebody that's your friend and you just want to go and thank them for being a friend you just mind the Lord during this invitation folks are coming they're picking out a song let's pray Father we love you thank you for the word of God God help us to be faithful and exercise the faith of God and God help us to just be what you'd have us to be and in so doing it'll bruise Satan's head Lord we know in our own power we can't do anything but lose to the devil but through Christ there's nothing we can't do so help us tonight and God we pray you'd speak to hearts and folks be obedient to the voice of God during this invitation just, just be glorified Father we'll thank you and praise you for what you do for it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all Amen if you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.